Okay, so in this video, I will access the server that we just launched on AWS from my laptop. And for that, I will download some open source tools, Putty, Putty Gen, uh, Xming, Xming fonts, which is optional. You don't have to download this one, but when you run Xming, it will, it might give a few errors. They, it, it will still run. Uh, so it's up to you. It's, it's not a big file. Uh, download encryption key. Well, we already have, if you recall, we uh, downloaded a .pem file. It's already on my desktop. After that, I'll configure it and we'll go from there. So let's go to my browser and putty.org, download putty. The link is right there. Oh. So putty and putty gen. These are the two files that we want to download. I've already downloaded them. Actually, if you look in my Explorer and documents putty, that's where I have these. If they are pretty small files, as you can see. So I won't download it, but go ahead, download that. And now let's do a search for Xming. That's the X server for Windows. And you just want to download it from right here. So click this, it will download it. I've already downloaded that a setup file the this setup exe file it's on my it's on my desktop i'll show you and so go ahead download this click this button after it has downloaded uh let's do this here is my xming downloaded on my desktop you double click this take the default settings and just install that so after it has been installed Let's go ahead and so I'm going to take that out. Now that it has Xming has been installed, let's do a search for Xming fonts. There's Xming fonts. Here's the folder where the file is that we want to download. This is the setup file that we want to download. As I said, I have it, so I'm not gonna download it. You can just click that, download it, put it wherever in the downloads. I usually just put it on X, uh, on my desktop. So here's my Xming fonts file that, I, that was downloaded. Go ahead, double click this. I took the defaults, go ahead, do that. After you have done that. For Putty and Putty Gen, there's not even an installation. These are just exe files, application files that you download and you just run them. So the the reason we downloaded Putty Gen is because the .pm file that we had, you recall, uh, let me bring it here. I put it on my desktop, my SDN key pair .pm. So this is the uh, the key, private key that I had encryption key that I had downloaded when I was creating the server in previous video. I'm, I'm, I've just moved it in the same folder. And but the .pm is not Putty doesn't work with that. It works with a file with .ppk. So to do that conversion, we need we need Putty Gen. So I'm going to load this PEM file. Open. Okay. You can put a key phrase. Uh, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to save it as a private key. It is a private key. Only you have this. Even Amazon doesn't. So that's the reason why if you lose the PEM file that was downloaded, you can't even get it from AWS. They don't have it. it it's, it's your private key and it's your responsibility to keep it. So let's go ahead and save this as a private key. Uh, are you sure you want to save this? Yes, I am. I'll give it the same name, 
ISDN key pair and then it will save it as a .ppk file. So it's done. We are done with putty gen unless until we need another key pair and we want to convert that to a ppk file. Now let's go ahead and open putty and the default username on AWS server is Ubuntu. Uh, so we will say Ubuntu at, and we are going to need the uh, public public IP or, or the DNS right here. And it will change every time you stop and then restart the server, that, that will change. So I'm going to leave this at Ubuntu at, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these things in putty, configure it, and then save that those settings. So next time I just load the settings and I don't have to go through that again, even though it's not a whole heck of a lot, but every little bit counts. I will go into connections in SSH, go to auth. Here we are going to load the PPK file that was generated. There it is. So I'll open that and I'll go to X11. I will enable X11 forwarding and I will put in 0, 0.0 as X dis display location. That's it. So this, these are the settings that won't be changing. We will keep these. And I will go ahead and save these as SDN lab. And next time when I go in, I can just click on this and click load. It will load up all of these settings. So for this part, uh, Ubuntu at, and we are, let me go to my instance this is my SDN lab this is the one that we created uh, in the previous window and public DNS is the is the field that I'm looking for I'll copy that and paste it right here after Ubuntu at and that's the public DNS name with that we say open there it is this is our server we are logged in and we are looking at our server there is nothing here it's empty uh, and the next step is going to be to set up this server we are going to install the all the required software and we'll go from there okay